this particular thing that I talked about with the repetition, we had a repeated test here, and then uh, we used uh, an argument to this um, this method. We had a repeated info uh, as an argument, and then um, we said, "Hey, JUnit, pass me this thing." Does that look familiar? That's something that uh, some other frameworks use as well. You basically declare an argument to a method and have the framework pass it to you. Does that ring a bell? That's dependency injection. There are a lot of dependency injection frameworks which do that, right? You declare an argument and say, hey, provide me this thing. I'm dependent on this. My code is dependent on this. That's dependency injection. Well, guess what? JUnit 5 does dependency injection. What you saw there with the um, with the parameter, the repeated uh, parameter is JUnit injecting your dependency. You're declaring the dependency and JUnit injecting it for you, right? There are a bunch of things that JUnit has providers for, and you can declare any of those types in your class, and then JUnit is gonna automatically inject it for you, okay? A couple of things that I wanna highlight is test info and test reporter that JUnit maintains internally. Test info contains information about the test, right? And test reporter lets you access the log it lets you access the console where JUnit is reporting uh, errors or whatever, and it lets you add to the reporting. Let's say you want to you want to add some messages to the final JUnit report. You can do that with Test Reporter, right? So Test Info and Test Reporter are both super handy if you want to have that kind of control over your test. Test Info if you want to get information about the test. Test Reporter if you want to report something out, right? Both of these classes are instances that JUnit maintains. And if you want access to it, you can use dependency injection to get those instances, right? I'll demonstrate how. We have a before each over here, right? You can use this before each to tell, hey, JUnit, give me these values. So I'm going to use these two classes here. Test info and test reporter. Okay, I'm gonna import these two. No surprise, it's the same package. Now, test info has methods which inform you what the test is about. So you have the display name. You can get the display name of a certain test. You can get the test class itself. What is this test class? What is the test method it's executing in the test class? What are the tags that this test class has been marked with? Right now, what I'm going to do is create these member variables, and I'm going to hold on to these things. Okay, so I'm going to say this is my test info and test reporter. I'm going to have member variables here so that it's accessible to all of my um, test methods, and I'm going to do this dot test info. Equals test info. Equals test reporter. I'm holding on to those things. And guess what? Here, where I have tagged this thing, let's say I print something over here. I can say system dot out dot println running test info dot get display name. Test info dot get tags. I'm not going to loop through this. I'm just going to depend on the default two string implementation of a set. Test get tags is returning a set of string. And now notice what happens when I run this. You're going to get that information about the test. So you're basically having the test kind of be aware of what class it's running in and uh, what are the tags that it has. You see here, you get a nice uh, console message which says uh, it's running the multiply method with these tags. So technically, you can have tests do different things depending on the tags. For example, you can have a utility method, a common shared utility method that all these tests use, do different things depending on uh, you know what method is running. You can probably have logs for, okay, this method ran at a particular time and all that stuff, right? So that's something that, 
uh, you can do, you can affect the functionality of your test by getting meta information about the test itself, right? That's very handy. Test reporter, on the other hand, lets you write to the JUnit output, okay? So here is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do test reporter dot, you see here, there is a publish entry method. The publish entry method, as the name says, publishes an entry. It puts a string to the output. You can have a map of uh, string to string, or you can just publish this individual string value. And that's gonna go to the JUnit output, not to system.out console, right? It's gonna go to the JUnit output. So it's gonna be visible no matter how you run your test. It could be in Eclipse, it could be a Maven build. So whatever is the output console that JUnit is printing output to, that's where this is gonna go. So it's very handy in that sense. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use test info and test reporter to log start times of each test class. That's a handy use case, right? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get this here, uh, test reporter dot publish entry. And I'm gonna take this value here I'm gonna publish that instead of printing into the console output. So if I run this, I've noticed that it's printed over here in the console. Well, nothing too different, but here you see it adds, it adds a bunch of stuff that you don't normally have. You see it has a timestamp added by default. It says it's a report entry and then the value that you've reported is this particular thing. That's what gets displayed on the console. So it's already a step up from your system.out.println because it's doing the timestamp thing. But then it also provides a, a recommended way of logging test messages to the console rather than using system.out because it knows where to put those messages depending on where JUnit is running or who is running JUnit. What happens if I put this in a before each? Does it get the test display name? I don't know, we'll find out. Well, guess what, it does it. So before each test, it is printing a message with the test message, uh, with the test name and the tags, and it's providing a, a start time and logging into the console. So this is actually a pretty good use case for using test info to figure out what the test that's currently running is, and then test reporter to log it. So this is another way you can actually get access to the test itself in the before each. Let's say you wanna do different things in the before each, depending on which test it is before off, right? If the before each is being run in front of an ad, do this. The before each is being run in front of a subtract, do something else. Guess what, you can do this by using test info, all right? So test info and test reporter are two um, dependency injected classes that you can access in your tests and you can use it to do different things if you choose to do so. All right, um, there is a way in which you can provide your own providers. So test info and test reporter, there's no magic happening here. There is a certain API that JUnit provides which lets you declare providers and say, hey, this is something that I want to publish as something that can be dependency injected. And if anybody needs this class, anybody has it in the argument, maybe a constructor argument or a before each argument, inject it for a JUnit, that's what the provider says. So JUnit framework has used this for creating providers. You can create your own providers as well. I'm not gonna go there because this is JUnit's basics course. Uh, you can in explore this or maybe I might create uh, a video uh, on YouTube for how to handle this. Uh, I'm not gonna cover this now, but the idea is you can create your own custom providers. Let's say you, are, you have your, um, you're testing a library system and you have a book provider and you can create that and tell JUnit, hey, this is my book uh, provider and anytime somebody requests book in the argument, they need a book instance, give them this book instance, right? You can create that method and give it to JUnit and JUnit is gonna call your method, get the book instance, and inject it to anybody who needs the book instance and have used dependency injection for it, 
right? So you can you can do that as well. So test info and test reporter are two examples of that provider. You can create your own providers.